So our last speaker is Jorge Martin, and he's going to talk about Ukraine after the elections and after the ceasefire. Jorge. Yes, I think that we can spend some time, <clears throat> and it is useful, trying to see which one is the best uh, historical analogy for what is happening in Ukraine. But I think it is important to look at the facts. What is happening in Ukraine today? What is the situation and what was the situation in the run-up to the most recent uh, elections in uh, territory con controlled by Kiev and also in the Donetsk and Luhansk uh, republics? First of all, the organization that uh, Alexei Albu belongs to, Borodba, is had to go underground because their offices have been raided, their members have been put under search uh, warrants, some of them have been arrested, some of them have been beaten, some of them have been killed. By whom? By fascist gangs acting with impunity and also by the security forces. In some cases there is not much difference between one thing and the other. The organization that the other Ukrainian comrade uh, spoke uh, is a member of, the Communist Party of Ukraine, is still legal, but only just the election rallies were attacked, the anti-war rallies were attacked by fascist thugs and the state uh, security services. Uh, there is an illegal case, court case, to make the party illegal, the Communist Party of Ukraine, uh, which has been started by the Minister of Justice, not been started by a small group outside of the state, it's been started by the government. The parliamentary faction was disbanded after they changed the rules of parliament so that they could disband the parliamentary faction of the, of the communist uh, party. And their members have also been attacked and killed. One of them uh, was killed in the Odessa massacre and in other incidents. The offices have been raided, the central committee offices were burned down by fascists, and in most of the west of uh, Ukraine they cannot uh, operate uh, normally. This is the current situation. In the run-up to the elections, 18 different newspapers and, and regular publications were, had their license to publish withdrawn for collaborating with a foreign uh, power. Uh, I mean, one of them is, uh, is, the, is the annual review of Russian agriculture. I mean, how can that be construed as, a, as, a, as an enemy of the nation? I don't really know. After the election, Two cinemas in Kiev were attacked. One was burned down by an incendiary device while people were inside. The other one was picketed and attacked by right sect uh, militants acting in complete impunity without the police doing anything about it for showing uh, films of a lesbian, gay, uh, bisexual and tra transsexual uh, theme uh, as part of a youth film festival that was taking place in uh, Kiev. Uh, the Vesti newspaper, a Russian language uh, publication in, uh, based in Kiev, has been twice uh, attacked. Uh, one with firebombs by a fascist uh, crowd outside. Then there was uh, a raid by the security services. That's why I'm saying there's not much difference between one thing or another. The two things overlap. The security services raided their offices. They took away their servers and, uh, and took them offline. Uh, they, they're now back online again with a server some, somewhere else. But this is the current conditions of very, uh, a very serious assault on democratic rights of anyone who's against uh, the government. It doesn't matter that uh, someone is in opposition to the government, but is not necessarily in favor of the rebels, or doesn't have any sympathies for Russia. Anyone who is against the government is an enemy of the nation and must be suppressed, either by the state security services or by people from, uh, or, or by the fascist gangs acting in impunity. When we talk about uh, the Nazis in Ukraine and the fascist uh, danger in Ukraine, we have never said that all Ukrainians are fascists or that the whole government is a Nazi government. This is clearly not the case, it's, a, it's an exaggeration. And this is not what is meant by having a campaign against fascism in Ukraine. But what we're saying, because sometimes people uh, who are against our campaign, they say, oh, there's fascists uh, get lots of votes in other countries. Fascism is a danger in other countries. Yes, uh, so it is. And some here are members of the, of the solidarity with the, with the Greek anti-fascist resistance uh, campaign. And we are all campaigning against fascism generally. But, it, but the difference in Ukraine is, is, is of a particular type. When the government launched the anti-terrorist uh, operation, the so-called anti-terrorist operation in May, uh, the first thing that happened was that the troops that they had sent, 
against the ordinary working people in Slovyansk, in Kramatorsk, and so on, they fraternized with the local population. They had been told, you are going to fight against Russian terrorists. And what they found was ordinary uh, people who had uh, taken over public uh, buildings. And so, therefore, the, 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 as it's been uh, explained, the government cannot rely on the ordinary drafted troops to carry out this campaign. They have to rely on the fascist paramilitaries who played a key role in the Maiden movement and the overthrow of uh, Yanukovych. They've been now incorporated into the state apparatus proper. The Azov Battalion has now been made into a regiment. It's been upgraded for their services. This is a, a battalion. It's, it's not a battalion that, that contains a few Nazis. It's a battalion that was created by Nazis, that is commanded by Nazis, and his main leader, Andrei uh, Bilersky, is now a member of parliament mm -hmm. with the support of the Popular Front, the People's Front, which is the party that uh, is the party of the, of the current uh, prime minister, <coughs> the president of the parliament, and the interior minister. I, they, they, this is quite a deliberate uh, uh, move. Now, who is uh, Andrei Bilersky? Because, I mean, some people, some people m might think that we're exaggerating when, when we say that he's a Nazi. But uh, I'd like to quote briefly from some, some of his views. Apart from the fact that they use Nazi para... They do not hide their views, these, these people. They are hidden over here. But over there, they're quite proud. They know what they want. They know where, where they're going. And, and one, one thing is for, for these bourgeois capitalist uh, people in parliament, in government, to, to be thinking that they are using the Nazis, but the Nazis thinking that they are using the other ones. And this is quite a dangerous uh, game. Just to mention briefly what he says. In a, in a, in a speech, that he wrote in, in an article that he wrote in June, not many years ago when he was young and naive. No, no. Now, as a commander of the Azov Battalion of the Ministry of Interior Forces, he wrote the following. The principles of the ideology of the National Assembly, i.e. his own organization, the Social Nationalist Assembly, he says. The principle of sociality should, should, should be understood as a complete negation of democracy and liberalism. We put forward the idea of national solidarity and a natural hierarchy and discipline as the foundation of our new society. Not a democratic vote crowd, uh, but the natural selection of the best representatives of the na nation, natural born leader conductors. We are against, we, we, we do not accept the modern system of government in which the prostitute and the academ academician have an equal right to vote where the degraded addict or homosexual equally are equally valued in the elections as the commander of a tank division. People are naturally born with different abilities and, and, uh, and happiness, the great happiness for every person is to find his place in the national hierarchy and consciously perform. This is just, just I mean, this is completely disgusting to follow. I don't think there's any need to, to go. And this guy, he wrote this in a public <coughs> publication in the month of June. So it's not that people don't know what his views uh, are. They know what his views are. And they need him to carry out this anti-terrorist operation. Not only that, but also to help uh, to, to, to lean on these paramilitary fascist gangs to suppress any opposition. Any opposition to what? Not only any opposition to the idea of a homogeneous one nation Ukraine. That's one part of the ideology, but the, the, the oligarchs, they don't really care about ideology. Poroshenko, uh, on the 14th of October, he declared that the, the, the day, the, the, the national day of the defenders of Ukraine, I like the, the, the armed forces day, was going to be October the 14th, which is the day of the founding of the Ukrainian insurgent army which collaborated with the Nazis during the Second World War and carried out a genocide of the Polish population in Western Ukraine during the Second World War and also of the Jewish uh, population in some of these uh, towns and villages. This is a Nazi organization. And he declared that the day in of the founding of this Ukrainian insurgent army is now the day of the national defenders of Ukraine. The day they are heroes in our history. But Poroshenko doesn't believe a word of, of this. He's using this ideology to rally his uh, mm. troops. But Poroshenko is, is, the, is, the, is the typical representative of, of, of the Ukrainian oligarchy, the people who stole state property and enriched themselves through theft, corruption, uh, robbery, and uh, killing uh, their business uh, opponents. Poroshenko has been a member of every single government and has every single opposition movement 
going back 10 years. He was a minister under Yanukovych. He was part of the Orange so-called revolution. And he was part of the government that was before the Orange uh, so-called uh, revolution. He, his uh, only interest is power. And he uses this very dangerous fascist ideology in order to maintain uh, power. And I would say that uh, the other gang, Yatsenyu, are probably more dangerous because they, they probably do really believe in this one uh, ethnically clean uh, Ukrainian uh, nation, uh, the main enemy of which is, the, is, is uh, Russia. And anyone, and anyone who is against that should be uh, uh, eliminated. They, they are, as someone described them, the, 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 the storm troops of, of uh, capitalist uh, ideology that want to implement not only a nationally uh, united Ukraine, but also one in which the IMF and the, the European Union plans of austerity, cuts and, and so on are carried out to the full, the interest of the capitalist class. And for this reason, I think, and, and I will end with this uh, point, that it's important to understand from my point of view that the struggle against fascism is also a struggle against capitalism. It's a struggle against the oligarchy that has taken over. It's a struggle, therefore, it's a struggle, therefore that can only take place on a class base, not on a national base. Na nationalism, particularly in Ukraine, is the ideology that's used by the ruling class or different sections of the ruling class to divide the workers along national lines so that they can implement their uh, plans. And the struggle against uh, that is the struggle against uh, fascism, which has to be the struggle of the working class. Working people in the East, but also working people in the West. The people who have been protesting against the draft, the people who will probably be this winter protesting against cuts in uh, public services, against the lifting of subsidies on heating uh, gas and other measures of this uh, government.